behind the cape. Are you, are you doing the sound effect that mm-hmm. comes in anyway? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Got you. Let's talk Ahsoka. Episode one and two has released. Obviously, you are the Star Wars guy here. So, what did you uh, what you think? Oh. First episode, I was very high. First episode was a stage setter, to say the least. I actually kind of got back into some of the the rebel stuff, just to kind of set me, you know, on an even keel with the with the characters, reestablishing at what point we are with Ahsoka, uh, Sabine, obviously Thrawn, and and all of that stuff. So just kind of get a, a general overview. I'm very interested. I'm, I didn't think that they would show the the little hologram thing of Ezra so quickly. Spoilers, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they would show that. Well, that was in the, um, I think that was in a trailer. So that's not really a spoiler. But they showed it right away, which lets me know it's going to play a role at some point in this six-parter. To what degree? I don't know. I've heard a little bit of back and forth on whether or not the whole Sabine Ezra thing is like a love thing. I, I just, it feels like a love thing. You know, uh, it didn't necessarily go that route in Rebels. And then apparently Dave Filoni is kind of backed away from it. I mean, but even in the very onset of this show, it feels very directed that Sabine has a closer relationship with Ezra than anyone else that might be looking for him. So. I don't know why you would shy away from that, but, you know, we'll see. But as far as Ahsoka, the character, man, t- talk about focus your character. Talk about focus your character. Even the little bit of time that we, we spent, I think maybe about a third of the first episode was spent on Sabine. But you know what? It was 50 fucking minutes. It was almost an hour long. I kept checking my watch like, damn, when is episode two starting? <laughs> six parter yeah let me give you some extra let me give you some meat on the bone and then oh are we gonna get a 30 minute or in episode two no 42 minutes another full length premium viewing experience like why can't we do this number one on a regular basis at lucasfilm and then number two why can't we get any of this at marvel like any of this, this stuff is it, it's building on the canon. It's it's creating connective tissue between things that were popular that were previously left off a screen or at least left off the big screen, meaning the rebel stuff or the Clone Wars stuff. And now it's putting it at the forefront. It's actually listening to the fandom and what it is they enjoy about the character in the stories. So far, so good. First two episodes. I'm there. You know, the little little freaky half Jedi, half Sith, orange lightsaber duelers. You know, shout out to Ray Stevenson, R.I.P. It's very interesting. The one chick that they're following, her eyes look crazy. She keeps freaking me out every time I see her on screen. <laughs> the visual aesthetics of the characters in, in this in this universe are, are much more prominent. Like, it makes you feel like you're actually watching some extraterrestrials. Mm. As opposed to, you know... A bunch of hipsters and, and, you know, fucking TikTokers dressed up in Star Wars gear, which is what cosplaying. This is what it felt like the last couple years of, of Star Wars content was. Um, I don't know, man. I loved everything about this. Loved everything about this. And to know that we still have so much more on the horizon um, from this starting point, man, it, it, it is very pleasing very pleasing if this is the future of star wars i'm down for it the other the other reason why i'm i'm excited about this show is because once again it's doing a very good job of sifting out the 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 grifters right because it's people who have been telling you that you know we just want to stay ahead of things and you know we just want to we we want to give you honest takes on what's happening and if they've kind of leaned into you know number reporting as a way of showing that objectivity but now you know that we have a quality series they're showing themselves to be the 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 hate mongers and the kind of the hate herders of the internet that they are right Mm -hmm. because we have to find some other way to criticize it nah it's it's not 
it, it's not you know overly detrimental to the characters of men it's not tearing down the history of you know established characters it's not reinventing or retconning things that we loved about star wars universe those were all the critiques we were getting you know under the guise of you know that word that w word right but now that we don't have any of that and the female characters are still there oh we got it we got to find something we got to talk about something um uh subscriber numbers that's it <laughs> you know even though the fucking show excuse me the freaking show appeared premiered last week right we we have exactly one week worth of viewership or tomorrow we will have one week of viewership mm -hmm. to base it off of so you know what we'll use to criticize it subscriber numbers yeah the subscriber numbers just aren't coming up after the ahsoka premiere so that must mean the show sucks yeah, and that's sense. the analysis so thank you for laying yourselves bare um that criticism isn't going to land with real Star Wars fans, I don't believe. Um, as long as this show continues to put out the content that I saw in the first two episodes, the attention to character and detail, um, even the fact that they started off the first episode with the tail of the tape. What was the last Star Wars project that you've seen do that outside of a movie? Maybe Mando season one? I don't believe they did it for Boba Fett. Somebody can check me on that. I know they didn't do it for season two of Mando or season three. Right? Like, that's not even something that is always customary for all the movies. But it's quintessential Star Wars, which is a, a ode to people who are looking to get back to what they know from Star Wars. If you can't get with that and you're still criticized, oh, female characters, oh, woke, <laughs> go eat shit, I guess, you know? Yeah. That's good though. At least Lucasfilm has a one in the the win column. Oh, they got one. They got one. Build on that one. Build on that one. And you know why they're ahead of Marvel now? Which is crazy to say. Yes. It's crazy to say. But you know why they're ahead of Marvel? Because the next Star Wars project that you see come out after Ahsoka will reference this. Mm. Yeah, it will I mean, reference it the events that happened in Ahsoka. Something so simple. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be to a very large degree. You can tell the story that you want to tell in the very next Star Wars project, be that a movie or a television show, it will reference this in some way, shape, or form. It's connected. Yeah. It's going to leave you on the edge of your seat to the next project where they reference it again. That is a concept that the MCU brandished into, into you know mass media form and now has somehow abandoned it altogether. Yeah crazy yep. but i guarantee you i guarantee you if they stick to that model and they reference this show this show proves to be successful the very next show they reference this it'll be it'll be comparable mm -hmm. in terms of viewership success audience reception because they want to see what what there will be goes. a link there will be a nostalgic tie back to the original property that you already liked so some of that good feeling and that nostalgia around that feeling will carry over into the new show almost guaranteeing you a plus reaction but when you make everything stand on its own and then add on top of that it's a new character and then add on top of that you've got a writer who doesn't have any type of connection or knowledge of the character so now the description is going to be well out of whack now expectations are being subverted it's a shit show yeah. None of that is happening right now with Ahsoka. Okay. So we talked about how the movie Barbie, the Barbie movie, mm -hmm. has had this huge chain reaction to where Mattel has wanted to make up to 45 other films, uh, including J.J. Uh, Abrams' Hot Wheels and a little Yachty Uno film and things like that, uh, which is crazy. It's a lot. 45 films, that's a lot. Uh, but it has not only had this chain reaction within Mattel, it has been announced that Hasbro oh has boy. launched an entertainment division. Oh, boy. And projects will be based on things like Nerf, G.I. Joe, Play-Doh, Peppa Pig, Transformers, which has already happened, My Little Pony, Dungeons and Dragons, which has already happened as well, and Magic the Gathering. But you know what this is, right? 
the the giant in children's merchandising has left the building right disney has left a gaping hole mm. in the children's merchandising market mm-hmm. so the sharks are coming to eat mattel hasbro any other anybody else who has any ties to nintendo anybody else who has ties back to an ip in the merchandising behind that ip they're 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 circling because there's a void right now. Disney is not serving the audience that they previously served with their toys, with their children's products, because no one, no one's paying attention. No one cares. Yeah. Yep. And so Mattel's like, well, shit, we'll fill that void. We don't have to be billion dollar, billion dollar movie every time out Marvel. We don't have to be that to be successful. Mm-hmm. We just need to create a successful path back to our physical properties in the store. And that that is success enough for us. Sure. Right. And Disney has gotten so far away from a basic model like that, that they'll beat them in short order too, mm-hmm. in short order, because they're not equipped, nor are they stocked with the IP to push product currently. Yeah. That's interesting. So then in that case, is Sony going to start making the Crash Bandicoot and Ratchet and Clank and Banjo-Kazooie movies? Hey. Might as well. Only a matter of time until we start seeing Capcom movies. Well, they had Street Fighter movies. Oh, yeah. I forgot about those. That was <laughs> awful. That was a terrible movie. <laughs> with uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. And... I wasn't even talking about that one. I was talking about the one with the chick from Smallville. The one who played Lana Lang. Oh, yeah, no. Anybody else think it was weird that there was a character that Superman was utterly in love with who wasn't Lois Lang? But was named Lana Lang or Laura Lang. It was Lana Lang. I think it was Lana Lang. Yikes. So the woman he was actually in love with was Lana Lang. But then Lois Lane came like. Okay. In the later seasons of Smallville, it was really weird. All right. Anyway. (laughs) Somebody page Tom Welling and ask him what the fuck was going on. (laughs) Let's talk about what's probably the biggest story this week for you. Dune 2 has been delayed to 2024. Y'all just ruined my fall watching season, man. Just destroyed it. Yeah. Now I'm just not going to have anything other than comedies that aren't really comedies, but are comedies left this year. The Marvels? Huge comedy? Aquaman 2? Aquaman 2 was more so where I was going, but yeah. (laughs) Damn, man. I was really hype about that, man. Mm -hmm. And then it's spring of 2024, too. March? Yo, hey, listen, man. I, I, I'm with you, writers. You've convinced me that your plight is uh, uh is, is just. And not just that, you've also convinced me that you're going to set in and wait until you get what you want. That's all well and good, man. But damn, Dune 2? Dune 2 is shot. Dune 2 is shot. Come on. We're suffering through all this other crap. Why can't I watch Dune 2? You greenlit all these other projects to go ahead. I'm assuming that you greenlit Dune 2, too, to a certain degree because... It kept its release date upon the strike. This just kind of seems like a, a, a negotiating tactic, which is, okay, good for you, I guess, but it sucks for the damn consumer. Yeah. And I, and I hate to tell you, but Bob Iger doesn't listen to me anymore than he listens to you. Like, your fight is with them. And I don't think you need any more pressure. There's no more new content being made. And every day, every mo- week, every month that this goes on, pushes production slates back further and further which means it's going to take longer and longer to get back up and running for some of these companies they are not just as set as you think they are even if they said fuck it we'll fire everybody and and go 100 percent ai tomorrow they're still going to be dealt with a law in production nothing's being made right now nothing is literally being created so we got this big gap in the timeline that they're going to have to try and accommodate for which is going to make it even more likely that they're going to have to pay these people because the rate that they're going to have to work to cover the ground that they've missed over the last two and a half months is going to be astronomical. So like their position isn't strengthening the longer that this goes. If it would have ended in a month, they would have been in the ultimate position. If it ended in a couple of weeks, they'd have been in the ultimate position. But as long as, as the closer we get to you getting bare, bare, like bottom barrel, nothing to produce, like Jesus Christ, we're going through divorces on Netflix that ended years ago. 
Johnny Depp and Amber Heard were divorced years ago. But that's the content that we waiting on, right? That's 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 what we sitting on. More reality TV. Boy, society needs it, don't we? There's going to be a lot of that, Holy shit. What is going to be sandwiched in between is Kung Fu Panda and Disney Snow White. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it'll do okay. Yikes. Kung Fu Panda's not in the same lane and... Well, I guess neither is Snow White. You get another Kung Fu Panda? What is that? Five? Four, I think it's it. Jesus. Yeah. And who knows if those movies are even going to come out right when they say they are. So. Yeah, true. So there's that. But I think Dune 2 has a nice little window, a nice little pocket they've carved out nah, for Dune 2 is fine. It's, it's going to do fine. I just wanted to see it. I, I no, prefer to sure. see the good movies, please. <laughs> you know. uh, along with that news, Aquaman 2 is staying put. December 20th. Yeah, we couldn't delay Aquaman? Nope. We couldn't move Aquaman to March? Nope. You're getting this courtroom scene. The whether fuck, you like Zaz it or laughed. Not. You couldn't stop this shit from happening? <laughs> God, damn. No, fam. You're going to watch this Aquaman movie and like it. Jesus Christ. Or probably not. I definitely. have to watch Aquaman, but yeah, you know, we'll just move Dune back to March, bro. And, and, and at some level, it feels like, you know, the actors may have acquiesced to that because oh, we'll, we'll, be at, we'll have a chance to actually do red carpet and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, what's interesting is that I believe I saw that the Marvels will now be getting all the IMAX screens, IMAX screenings. Yep. Which, congratulations. I was going to say, I don't know how much that's going to help or yeah, hurt. Congratulations. But I, I wanted to see Dune too. Yeah. Yeah. I know you did, but it's not going to happen right now. Okay, so some uh, information from the Washingtons. So, obviously, mm-hmm. the Equalizer 3 is coming out in September, I believe, mm-hmm. correct? Yep. Which is great. I'm sure we'll probably see it in a review at some point. Antoine Fuqua. Fu- Fuqua. Fuqua. I don't know why I don't know how to say that name. Antoine Fuqua uh, has said that he is also potentially looking at uh, creating a prequel with Denzel's son, John David Washington. I don't have my wallet, but I would literally throw it at the camera if, it, if I had it. Yes, do it. Yes, do it. Yeah, I've always wondered like what dude came from and like, like what, what, why, what and why. Uh, I think that would be similar to like what Michael B has going on with Creed right now. Maybe, yeah. maybe give Denzel and 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 John some insight into how they because now they're gonna be playing the same man. They're gonna be playing the same character. So maybe give them some some producing, some producing some credit, right? Some insight. But I I, I like that idea. Kind of similar lot. to what's going on with John Wick, and kind of creating sure. a at least a backstory in this case. Not maybe a maybe not a whole universe An around equalizer it, but, universe to yeah. a certain degree. Yeah. yeah, they'd have to work on their auxiliary characters because to this point they haven't had anybody that's carried over. Yeah, you know from the from the previous movie. John Wick is just so good around creating mystery around some of the characters, and they've they had have. a bigger cast. Right? They've too. had much bigger cast. I think the the biggest star that's been in the, one of the equalizer movies was Pedro Pascal. Mm. And, yeah. and I guess now Dakota Fanning, if you count that, but no, I don't. It's weird. Yo, you know what I was thinking when I seen her in the trailer? What if they reveal that the Equalizer or the Equalizers are sequels to Out of Time or not Out of Time, Man on Fire? I, I like, mean, dude escaped the cartel. He became a a a, a, a killer for hire. Old girl tracks him down years later when she's grown, starts hiring him, sending him on. There's doing something jobs. there that's gonna prevent that from actually <laughs> from being actually a thing. being a thing. I, I want somebody to do the YouTube video where they cr- <laughs> they connect the dots from from Man on Fire all the, the way Denzel to Equalizer. Denzel Universe Theory. That's yes, crazy. yes, do it. You do it. I will. <laughs> uh, also from the Washington camp, John David Washington has the Creator coming out, which I believe. I might have seen the trailer, uh, but yeah, interesting little film. Obviously, it's gonna have to fill my sci-fi fix here in the fall. Um, but it seems like kind of set up around AI in some sort of way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, visually looks pretty good. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm definitely gonna give it a chance. Not like I have very many other things to line up for. So fair enough, for sure. That's fair. Margot Robbie, oh, maybe reprising her role as. Harley Quinn. 
good old DC. Okay. Making things happen. So we had two Suicide Squads. Yes. We had Birds of Prey. Yes. Okay. Two of those movies we just won't talk about because there's no reason for me to disrespect the people that worked on them or played in it. Sure. Second Suicide Squad was okay. It was decent. But Margot Robbie's role was much, much more diminished than what it was in the first movie. Or at least a little bit more evenly distributed amongst the rest of the cast. John Cena, Idris Elba. You know, there was some other some other hitters in there. Viola Davis. When Margot Robbie is in a cast of heavy hitters, Jonah Hill, Leonardo DiCaprio, John Bernthal, she blends really well. She's like a nice sweetener. She's like half and half. You know? But like... You ever tried to drink a cup of half and half? It's not milk. Is Barbie the same thing? I think Barbie may be an aberration. Or it just may be a really good movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Well, considering Barbie also has Ryan Gosling and... Yeah, Simon Lou, Issa Rae, right? Or maybe they just got the formula just right for a Margot Robbie movie. We're saying that without having seen Barbie, to be fair. Yeah, but now if you telling me that now she's going to be Harley Quinn a feature artist towards other projects, so Harley Quinn shows up in Brave and the Bold and she shows up in um, Superman Legacy she shows up in The Authority or something like that. that I think that could work. I, I do think that could work. And then not to mention, those three films that I put in there probably budget-wise rack up to close to a billy. So they had already invested a lot of money into Margot Robbie. Not, me- not to mention the other films that they were making, you know, for like the, um, what's that shit she just made with John David Washington and, uh, and Christian Bale, uh, Manhattan. You know, like she's had other movies, you know, kind of in between her hits that just haven't really done it so they pumped a lot of money into her you would like to get some of that back but if they're talking about a harley quinn movie or another birds of prey or harley and the joker or anything like that it it just feels a little convoluted and then we've already seen it not work out when she's the the main attraction she just works better as a as a relief or a mixer then she does, hey, hey, everybody come see Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Who else? Just her. Okay, I'll see it on TV. Uh, you know, not to say anything about her acting skills, but I think she's an, at least a name that'll pull. I don't think she. I don't think it's an acting skill thing. I think she's a fine enough actor. I just don't think her movies do well when she's the lead. Mm. Right? Barbie is kind of, and I, I'd have to see the movie to tell you. But all I know is, is that when she is side by side with, I liked her in Focus, right? With Will Smith. Yeah. When she is side by side with other elite actors, she plays off of them very well. Well, if that's the case of her selling a movie, I think she did a, a lot of the legwork for Barbie. She'd have to. She'd have to. She's the blue eyed blonde girl playing Barbie. She literally has to. So, so at the very least, you don't think announcing a harley quinn are you, movie. are you talking about the legwork in terms of marketing it or, or talking about the movie well marketing it to to bring people okay, in to no, make it a, i didn't to say make it she success. couldn't market the movie i'm saying when she is starring in a movie put barbie in a box as her shining achievement in terms of leading roles right mm-hmm. obviously that's the biggest best thing she's done outside of that we have all these other examples birds of prey manhattan um uh she wasn't really she was kind of the least she was a co-lead in manhattan suicide squad and the suicide squad right she wasn't she wasn't really the lead in the first suicide squad but she had a very featured role like she was seen a lot a lot like if they were vying for who was the number one character harley quinn was in there and you had dead spot or or whatever i think i would agree if if literally it wasn't for Barbie being out. I mean, that's the only one though. But no, this is turn the only, around now. Maybe. It is the only example that we have of her being able to carry a film to success. And we can't even say she carried it because we know for a fact that once again she is she is straddled by very elite actors. 
And I haven't seen it to say that that movie was all Margot Robbie. Yeah. But as far as the Harley Quinn thing goes, though, I think we know how successful that is for her now already. I don't think we need any more evidence. Yeah. Right. It was slightly more successful when she was divvied out equal kind of equal screen time. And the more screen time she gets, the worse the film is. And I'm saying it's her fault, but I'm saying that's the correlation. Like Birds of Prey was kind of like P. Carly Quinn. It was literally her story. Dog shit. Yeah. Dog shit. I don't know. I'll just say, I guess maybe now that she has Barbie on her wing, maybe she can turn that around. But maybe. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't, I'm not saying I that's going to happen. I would not like to see any more Harley Quinn movies. Yeah. That doesn't mean I wouldn't like to see Harley Quinn and other things. Harley Quinn, played by Lady Gaga, is going to show up in The Joker too. Yeah. So it's also getting very convoluted, right? You're going to have two Batmans, and then you're going to have two Harley Quinns, and then, you know, we got the Green Lantern core. Hopefully we get, you know, two guys from the same universe, and we don't convolute it that way either. Yeah, but one Harley Quinn is a musical Harley Quinn, because Joker is going to be a musical. Hey, man. <laughs> Y'all let me know. Y'all want to see Margot Robbie back as Harley Quinn? Tell us in the comments. Also, let us know what you thought about the episode. Like, share, and subscribe. Come back next week for another Behind the Cape episode. Absolutely. Make sure that you check out our previous Behind the Cape where we discussed. Oh, wait on it. DC and how it's struggling finding a win. Uh, And then also make sure you subscribe. Like he said, we like to do this every week.